great motivator. It is, of course, in something we've known for a long time, spirituality has become very commercialized. We speak about happy nomics, and uh, David uh, Cameron recently spoke about that we, it was about time to measure the um, GDP in a maybe gross domestic happiness index. It's nothing new. Sarkozy did it a few years back. Kennedy spoke about it, and the prince of Bhutan spoke about it, the king of Bhutan, many years ago. So this idea of happiness as an index is something that more and more of us are, are trying to sort of hunt for. I mean, I'm Danish, I'm safe, I'm from the happiest nation in the world almost, or at least the Scandinavian regions are quite happy. Not that I have the recipe to happiness, and I think it's all a matter of balance. So in order to understand what you as a whole brain organization are up against, is here a model where you need to tick all the boxes. Very often people come up to me and say, do you know what? I tick that box and I tick that box. But it's not the boxes you are ticking you should be concerned about. It's the, it's the ones you are not ticking. And I guess in order to really be a whole brain organization and in order to be prepared for the future, you have to provide a space that gives empowerment. You have to have an informed dialogue. I'm not speaking about a one-way conversation. It's dialogue here. You have to give people the opportunity to participate. And also, you have to provide a platform where there is more than just money. It also has to provide meaning and self-fulfillment. And just to kind of just give a rough idea of what those people would look like, and I'll have happily give you my presentation. You can have it for inspiration. The speed hunter, if we look at them as a unit, it's very much for them about personal performance. It's very much about that communication, anything that is strategic and lean, that is them. And I found this case study, which is an office space in uh, Sydney, a bank, uh, the Maguire Investment Bank. And definitely, they had seen the importance of creating a different workspace. And I thought it was very inspiration and very much the space for the speed hunter. Now, probably more and more people are speaking about the creative class environment. Cloud culture and dialogue is what motivates this group of people. They live on the internet. Blogosphere is what they are all about, shared experience getting together, making ideas happen. The ideas economy is really big for them. And in fact, what I also saw was very interesting, an alternative thing is the School of Life. I don't know if anyone has been there. Have anybody been to the School of Life? Um, it's um, Alain de Botton. He wrote The Architecture of Happiness. He has a small shop front together with a psychologist and the um, artist just around the corner from here, near Holborn Station. But it is more a place where he teaches people how to just actually live together again as a family and how to have holidays at home, doing gardening, etc., etc. So it's just a different way of, of looking uh, at you know, how we might interact in the future. But really, this is where a lot of people are looking to inspiration. This is uh, Facebook. Google has you know, similar interesting spaces. But we are not all the Google or the Facebooks you know, in the future, we might have different needs. But definitely this sort of space, it's what m many people look at for inspiration. The Global Sustainers, the Energy Academy, I think is very inspirational. And there's also the um, hotel here in, I can't remember the name, Hotel Indigo in Patagonia. Everything is sustainable. This is a very interesting, uh, I would say, poster, simply because of one thing. I don't know if you're aware of the statistic of uh, impact from the building industry. Uh, fashion probably is the most unsustainable, um, I would say, thing in the whole world. So if you're in the fashion industry, you're really not you know, very popular. The second, big, you know, the second big polluter on this list is I think the building industry, the third one is the meat industry, and only fourth come transportation, something like that, and they do change a little bit, and it depends how you calculate it on a, big, a bigger scale. But really, the building industry are suffering, and I read that in a re report from the UN. So clearly, building sustainable green space is something we will see more of in the future. And last but not least, the spiritual explorer, they're all about spirituality, and this case study here before we go to the small film, which is from IBM, 
This is the type telecommunication in Bangkok that had six units throughout Bangkok. It wasn't very sustainable. They put it all into a 20 storeys building. On the top floor, they built a fantastic inspirational auditorium, library, a place to meditate. And on the 16th floor, we heard from Charles, that's the people who decide the chairs. Mm -hmm. In this case, they put the gym. They have a whole floor just for the running track and a gym. So really, you go to work here, not to work really, but to socialize and feel better. And people are coming in all the time. They use this as the workplace branding exercise, and they have become one of the most desired employees uh, in uh, Thailand. In fact, Google Flex is a very inspirational um, concept as well. Google have 1,300 resumes a day. This is how attractive their new idea is of the, of the sort of relaxable workspace. And I would like to have the film now. In fact, IBM is um, rewarding uh, their employees for meditating. What are you guys doing? We're ideating. ID what? Ideating. What's that? Coming up with new ideas. Why don't you just call it that? This is different. We need to rethink the way we do things. Structure. Process. We need to innovate. How? We haven't ideated that yet. Good luck. Thanks. So it's really time to stop, stop talking, but start practicing. And I always think that IBM has had you know, some interesting, quite forward-thinking ideas. It isn't just big companies that are meditating. Small companies are doing it as well. In Denmark, of course, you're rewarded if you bike to work every day. You get an hour's extra time off. And throughout one year, it means one week. So really, this whole idea of health and well-being and spirituality is big. And I think also with regards to the survey we saw earlier, that soon we will see the 4G workplace. There will be a much more diverse um, um, workforce and I think really our biggest challenge in, is to create inspiring work uh, environments and it means also really that we have to think in a very very different way. We have to view our employers, employees as a dynamic parts uh, of our business growth and also really so much more because more and more people are asking how can I get more out of life. You have to be people centric and engage a culture that is inclusive, a culture that really brings people together. Because really the future is not somewhere we go, we create the future. So my advice to you is, all of you, be the change you want to see in the world. Thank you.